One of the things I remember, we met at the, at the home of this Indian holy woman in the middle of Germany, in a small German village. And uh, then we, we started talking, and immediately you, you were telling these compelling tales. They mm -hmm. were tales about Thomas Aquinas. And mm -hmm. the, you'd go into Thomas Aquinas, and you'd do their voices, you'd do the setting. You were doing book writing all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't say to many people, hey, you should write a book. I said, like, are, are, you, are you a writer? But you had had that background in writing, hadn't you? You'd, you'd, you'd written plays, you'd written stories and things for the, for the magazine? Uh, yes, oh, that's right. Yeah, I was an editor of my literary magazine at University, mm -hmm. at university and I'd written an, an opera, and I'd always written poetry, but mm -hmm. I'd never written a novel. I'd never written or a big book of nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And you had written many of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you having... So my first novel was about to come out. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I just read, I, 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 re I remember reading it around the same time. You're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. uh, the great thing about that book was that um, I read it. I stayed up all night to read it, mm -hmm. just about, mm -hmm. uh, because it was so it was so exciting. You, how many have you got now? Um, this will be the eighth. Eighth, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, they they keep coming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and do you find I find that sometimes your voice is entering my my work? You know, I'm writing, mm -hmm. and I realize, oh, that was some that, there's some of James's lines that have just come through me. Yeah. Have you found that experience at all? Well, very much so, actually. Like I mean, movie? yes. Uh, I find sometimes that I've written something and I think that's the way Martin would have done it. Mm. Um, and for me, it's actually, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying that because you have a way of, you in, write sentences that undermine expectation. Mm. Uh, it's very difficult to predict how your sentences are going to come out. And I found some of that creeping into mine. Mm -hmm. uh, what, how do I creep into yours? This... Authority mm -hmm. come, comes through mm -hmm. sometimes of knowledge, you know, that feeling bold enough to, mm -hmm. to know something, mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, particularly clear sentences mm -hmm. will come through. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of those sentences where I do know where it's going to come out. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that working together and the writing, that intensity of writing, is something that we worked on as well. Mm -hmm. Remember, we actually divided time. Mm -hmm. we'd, 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 we'd written in some really small places, like um, the small caravans without any electricity or services, mm -hmm. and this little house that we've got the little, little writing retreat in, in France. Mm -hmm. And remember how we, we worked out, sometimes we were just getting on top of each other, but sure. we, we divided the day so that we created space, extra mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. out of time. That worked very well, actually, and that, that came from, uh, from my experience in Zen practice. Well, what we did was to divide the day so that we would write in the morning, and then we would have lunch together. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't actually have to talk at lunch. Mm -hmm. We could have, we were allowed to not talk to each other mm -hmm. at lunch in case you were deep into a writing mm -hmm. process. The idea was you just didn't have to ca take care of the other person. Yeah. It's enough taking care of yourself in your own yeah. process sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And then at six o'clock, uh, we'd have a drink. This was uh, France, it was half past five. This was France, it was half past five, that's right. We did very well not to do it at yeah. lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then we would have a drink, and then we would talk about the day. Mm -hmm. And you still didn't, the rule was you didn't have to talk about what you were writing last mm -hmm. that day, but we tended mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. because we tend to help solve each other's writing problems. Mm -hmm. really. mm -hmm. Yeah, and at half past five, we actually changed around with the cooking of things as yeah. well. So at half past five, you do live in a clean kitchen. And from then on, through half five the next day, you were, you were cooked for and catered for and had a special seat as well. So we you know, just created. That's right. The whole yeah. environment out of the day. Yeah. That way. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Uh, we don't necessarily read the same things, do we? We don't. You know. Well, uh, no, uh, we don't. Um, but, yeah, more and more, I guess, I'm finding that uh, novels that you really like, I'll try. Mm. And I generally like them. Mm. Uh, and uh, then what's been happening is you're so good at finding books, you've often been finding the books that I read, even mm. if you don't like to read them yourself. Mm. Like, uh, I've been reading uh, 1950s and 60s British science fiction that I had, hadn't caught up on. Mm -hmm. um, and are we both the same in that generally I will write a whole book and keep it secret? So we're not, we don't talk about the process while we're doing it. We, certainly my way is I, I write a book and then I deliver it to you. And there's not, there's not a lot of process before that. Well, um, but I don't think that's the case on my end because I do talk about it with you mm -hmm. and uh, you do help me with the plot and the structure. Mm -hmm. I thought I did it with you a little bit. 
Uh, what's what's so that for better ideas, anyway? Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I try and keep it as a surprise, really, so that you're, you're my sure. first readers when you get to yes, that, sure. that clean reader. Uh, yes, no, what we don't do is that we, we don't hand the book to the other one to edit until uh-huh. it's done. But I, I feel like we talk about the, the plot and the structure. Maybe it leaks out. I, yeah. I yeah. thought it was a good idea to, to contain it in yourself and mm. not talk about yeah. it, because yeah. then all the energy goes into that's right. writing the book. You're much more talkative than I. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah. So I feel like uh, I do ask hey, you. Hey, I have a new idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do ask you and you do guide me. Um, yeah. But then when we are finished, um, we hand the book uh, and then we help edit. I mean, uh, the novel I'm working on now, um, I hand it to you and um, I was very excited by what I had done in the final section, mm-hmm. the final third of the book. I thought it was very clever. Um, and, um, and you read it and you said, uh, it may be very clever, but I think you should throw it out and start again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You did. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very compliant. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your response is often, yeah. <laughs> and I know that's thrown out and start again. You know? oh, so I see. Okay, there, yeah. there are sections like that that we both do for each other that we can be quite dramatic about each other. Um, work in that editing way. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. And, and quite honest. I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I guess it's because I trust your judgment entirely mm-hmm. and that I don't think that you're ever trying to do anything other than make it a better story. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we could do it. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to trust somebody mm-hmm. else uh, in the, the way that you let them entirely into your creative process. Mm-hmm. It's good having a reader, at least, isn't it? Somebody who's going to read your book. So you know that at least one person yeah. in the world will read it? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You can, you can go out on the limb, you can write different things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, have you ever written any gay fiction or written any gay characters, even back in your days of writing opera for the university? Did anything gay sneak out? I don't think I've been any gay characters, no. But that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean I won't. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, now that I've now that I'm working on another novel and then hope to do more, mm. um, it may well be. Mm. Um, maybe it was Arnold. Yeah. Uh, I'm writing this sequence of stories about you know, this preposterously positive gay character based on the Berdash tradition uh, of the American Indian. And it's in seven years. It's the, the lovely life of Arnold told in seven years stages. Mm-hmm. And that would just came from being in France and just seeing what book wanted to come out. Um, but there's also my, I've written a novel with a, with a native gay character. I've featured my own story in books. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'm, my, maybe I'm my first gay character. Though you, of course, made me gay. So you, I'm, part of your, <laughs> I, I'm part of your creation. I wasn't even gay until you met me. So, so well, I was never successfully gay until I met you either. <laughs> 